Well, uh, let's pray as we start our time together. Heavenly Father, we ask now that you would give us the spirit of wisdom and revelation, that you, that you would open our eyes to see the power of the resurrection. Amen. Amen. Well, uh, the pyramids of Egypt are one of the most famous sites in the whole world. They are amazing buildings, and millions have flocked to see them, haven't they? But it's funny when you think about it, because the pyramids of Egypt are essentially glorified graveyards. They contain the mummified bodies of the ancient Egyptian kings. But graveyards are generally often quite famous. That phenomena is repeated all over the world. Westminster Abbey, for example, is renowned, isn't it, as the burial place of the English kings and queens. Mohammed's tomb is noted for its stone coffin and the, the bones that it contains. The Taj Mahal was built as a memorial to the wife of one of India's shahs. But there is one famous grave that is very different, the tomb of Jesus. And the tomb of Jesus is important not because of what it contains, but of what it doesn't contain. It is important because there is nothing to see in it. It was an empty tomb because Jesus rose from his tomb. Now, last week we were looking at Easter Sunday and, of course, we were thinking about the risen Jesus, the risen Lord Jesus. And we saw how Jesus is unique and how he is supreme and how he raises out of death. He alone is risen from the dead. And this week we're going to think about our experience of resurrection. And we're going to see that resurrection life is not just something for Jesus, but it, but it is something for you and me. It is not just Jesus's tomb that is empty, but our tomb is empty as well. The Bible tells us this in Galatians 2.20. I have been crucified with Christ and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. He is the risen Lord. He is the living one. And the Lord Jesus Christ now lives in you. You are alive. The one who is supreme and unique in the face of death, the one who raises the dead, lives in you. He reigns in you. And that is the hope of believers. Not simply that we get our own resurrection, like some kind of faint echo of Jesus' resurrection, like some kind of second-class resurrection with standing room only. No, 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 no. You get to share in Jesus' own resurrection. You are united to him and you are united to his power. The life of Jesus is in you. Today, you get to live in his resurrection life. Now, of course, our lives now have been full of many stresses and many sadnesses, many fears and many worries, many uncertainties and many discouragements. Our lives are, are affected by monotony and boredom, weariness and chaos. Things have not gone as you had planned. Your hopes have been dashed and we are living in a global pandemic. But what this means when we talk about the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ is that you are no longer defined by your outward circumstances. No, the risen Christ lives in you. And of course we know that one day our bodies are going to be raised with him and we will be raised out of the tombs and our bodies will be transformed. But that resurrection life is not just something future. It is something that is also real in our present. It is something which we are getting to experience now, something which we are tasting 
Now, your life is defined by the life of Jesus Christ. Your life is Christ. He lives in you and you live in him. The old person is dead and something new has come. Someone new has come. You have become a new person in him. You live by faith in the risen Christ. So what we're going to do now is we're going to break this down and we're going to, we're going to uh, pull this apart and have a think about all that this means. And we're going to look at three aspects of this risen life in Jesus Christ. Firstly, his risen power now lives in you. His risen power is working in you. The fact is that the Bible says that the same resurrection power of God that worked in Jesus is also working in you today. In the middle of everything that you are facing now, his resurrection power is at work. Now, just think about that for a moment. I've just said something that is particularly mind-blowing, particularly encouraging. The power that worked to raise Jesus from the dead is also in you. Now, you may be thinking, oh, well, this, this preacher, he's, he, he's, he's got carried away. He's, he's been in lockdown too long. But I'm not exaggerating one bit. It, this is absolutely true. And the Bible is very clear on this. If you go to Ephesians chapter 1, verses 18 to 20, we see there that the Apostle Paul says, or he, wa he wants the believers to know the hope to which he has called you and his incomparably great power for us who believe. That power is the same as the mighty strength he exerted when he raised Christ from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly realms. Wow. Now, I know that you probably don't feel very supernatural at the moment. You looked, you looked at your droopy face in the mirror today, you squeezed that zit, you examined your wrinkles, and you didn't feel particularly glowing or mighty. Well, the Apostle Paul often didn't feel like that either. He was very accustomed to feeling weak. In, in Romans 7.24, he talks about carrying a body of death. In uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 16, he talks about how we are outwardly wasting away. And a few weeks ago, we looked at Paul's thorn in his flesh in 2 Corinthians 12. And we looked there at how he experienced massive weakness and was tormented with a mysterious affliction. So the Apostle Paul knew weakness. And in fact, as he wrote these words to the Ephesians, he himself was in lockdown and self-isolation. See, these words I've just quoted to you from the book of Ephesians were originally part of a letter that Paul wrote from prison. This, these words were not written in suburban safety or in a library or in a minister's study, but they were written from prison. Paul knew weakness and troubles and isolation and lockdown, but he also knew the resurrection power of Jesus Christ. And Paul wants you and me to know this today. He wants us to see the almighty, boundless power of Jesus Christ in you and for you. He wants you to see the resurrection power that is working in you, despite your weakness, despite the fact that we are outwardly wasting away, despite the fact that we carry around with us bodies of death, the risen Lord Jesus Christ is working with all his might and his power in our lives. I don't know if a number of years ago you saw uh, the uh, TV series Secret Millionaire, and it was all about how someone who was incredibly wealthy would go into some project or some situation and pretend just to be an ordinary person. And they would visit everyone, uh, but with the hope, actually, of, of helping support people financially. See, outwardly, these people look like they were just like you and me, just kind of ordinary people. But actually, they were very, very wealthy. Behind the facade, there was much more going on. Now, outwardly, you and I, we may have zits and wrinkles, but inwardly, the Bible tells us, we are heavenly. Outwardly, we are poor but inwardly we are rich. The resurrection power of the Lord Jesus Christ is working in us today.
Secondly, his risen power has made you alive. His risen power has made you alive. Now, everyone has a story. Everyone has a story. To really know someone, you have to understand their story. You have to understand their past. And one of the things I've been humbled by as a pastor again and again is that you think you know someone. You think you know what the issues are. But then you learn something about their story. You learn about what they have been through. You learn about the difficulties that they have faced and the struggles that have been there in their lives. And suddenly it all looks very different. All because of their past, all because of their story, the present looks quite different. Now what's true of us personally is also true of us spiritually. You have a story. And I'm afraid to say that your story does not start very well with God. The Bible tells us that our start with God is one of spiritual death. We are naturally cut off from God. We are dead to God. Ephesians 2.1 says this, As for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sins. Now, of course, you were physically alive. Your heart was beating. You were breathing. You, uh, you played table tennis and did baking and drank coffee. You were physically alive. But the Bible tells us that you were spiritually dead. God meant nothing to you. You had no relationship with him. You were cut off from him. His power was far from you. That was your natural state. You didn't need to try to be like that. You just were that. So your story didn't start well. But something out of this world stepped in. And in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 4 to 5, we read that because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ, even when we were dead in transgressions. A miracle happened. A miracle. God stepped in and he made you alive. God poured his spiritual life into you and his resurrection power entered your life. And so you were no longer in darkness. You were no longer blind. You were no longer cut off. Today, through Christ, you are spiritually alive and everything is different. You have a sense of spiritual things. You are alive to God. God is real to you. The Bible's interesting. It makes sense to pray. Church matters to you. You want to be like Jesus. You are growing in the fruit of the Holy Spirit. And God's own spirit lives in you. It's like you've been given the sixth sense, this spiritual sense that was just uh, dead before. The resurrection life of Jesus is filling you. Your story has got a lot better, hasn't it? It's been transformed. So today, don't go back to spiritual deadness. Don't crawl back into your old spiritual grave. Don't go back to the things that you once loved. You have been saved from those things. You've been brought out of those things. Don't go back to the life that you once lived without God, dead to God, cut off from God. The Bible tells us that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. His resurrection life is in you. He has made you alive. Thirdly, his risen power has raised you to heaven. Now, as you listen to this, I suppose that you are at home. You're, you're sat on your sofa, lying on your sofa. You're sat in your favourite chair as you watch this. And uh, I hope you're comfortable. I hope you're relaxing. But do you know what? The Bible tells us that you're not actually just sat on your sofa. You're actually sat somewhere else. The Bible tells us that at this moment, you are sat on a mighty throne with Jesus. Whatever your present surroundings look like, you're actually sat on something bigger than your IKEA furnishings. And you're certainly sat on something that's going to last a lot longer than your IKEA furnishings. Paul says this in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 6, And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in, in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. You're not just in your living room, but you are enjoying the reign of Christ. 
you are sharing in the reign of Christ. Theologians call it the session of Christ. And they are referring there to how Jesus Christ has sat down in the place of authority. Salvation has been completed and he is now reigning in full authority. His resurrection power has, in other words, caught us up into the reign of Christ. He has raised you up to be in heaven with him. Now, I know that you're in lockdown. I know that your movements are restricted. But you need to know this today. The resurrection life of the Lord Jesus is not restricted. Yes, you are in the middle of self-isolation, but you have been lifted up into the heavenly realms. Now, your life probably doesn't feel very heavenly. You're stuck in your flat. You're, uh, you're stuck viewing videos of cats on skateboards and you're looking out of your window longingly, missing the noise of the rush hour and uh, looking for the faint smell of pollution that used to be there. You're unsure of your future. You, you, you don't know what is going to happen tomorrow. And the heavenly realms seem very far away, don't they? But do you know what? You are raised with Jesus. You've been raised with Jesus above all spiritual authorities and powers. You have been raised with Jesus above a fallen world. You've been raised with Jesus above death. And you are sat with him, enjoying access to the Father. You are tasting the glory of heaven and you know a new life in him. The fact is, as you listen to this sermon, you are actually sat in two places. You're sat on your sofa and you're sat on the throne. You have a dual citizenship. You have a dual passport. However, while the sofa is obvious to you, the throne probably isn't. See, you and I don't struggle to know that we're sat in our living rooms, do we? What we have a problem with is recognising what is above us. We don't have a problem knowing, uh, knowing that we are very earthly. We don't have a problem feeling the, the disappointments of our world. We don't have a problem worrying about the next news story. What we have a problem with in lockdown, or, or in fact at, at any other time, is seeing who we have become, seeing where he has taken us. Our sofas seem bigger and more real than the throne of God in heaven. And so we forget that we're sat with him. We forget where we belong. We're consumed by what is going on on earth rather than what is going on above us. We're naturally more focused on our earthly circumstances than we are on our heavenly circumstances. And so we need to remember to look up. And in the book of Colossians, Paul says this, Colossians chapter 3, verse 1, Since then you have been raised with Christ, Set your hearts on things above, where, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. He says you've been raised with Christ. Therefore, because of this, on the basis of this, set your heart on things above. Look to your seat in heaven, not simply to your sofa on earth. You belong above. You belong to heaven. Keep your focus. Direct your heart to what? God's word says is true. His risen power has raised you to heaven. So today we're seeing that the resurrection of Jesus Christ is not just for Jesus Christ. It is for us. We have died with Christ and Christ now lives in us. He defines us. His risen power is working in us. His risen power has made us alive and his and his risen power has raised us up to heaven his resurrection life didn't just work for him it worked for us and it is today working in us you have become a secret millionaire in all your frustrations in all your worries in all your stresses and in all your temptations set your heart on the life above. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we exalt you today. We praise you today. We put our hope in you today. You are raised up above all authority and power. 
And Lord Jesus, you have done that for us. You take us with you. And you are working in us with your resurrection power. You have made us alive and you've poured your life into us and you have given us a throne with you. Amazing, Lord Jesus. Open our eyes by the power of your Holy Spirit. Give us eyes to see all that you are and all that you have become for us. Amen.